Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to go over the final assignment and the final cruise for Coastal Nav 1. So um, our first section on this worksheet is practice of reading the chart symbols which we use uh, chart 1 for. It has all the symbols. We use the back to figure out where we're going to be. Uh, if we don't have the physical chart 1, then we can use the back of uh, the 1210 TR chart. It has the um, chart 1 printed. So uh, we'll take a look at number 1 here. It has R, N, 4 in quotations, and the buoy symbol. So I'm going to look on the back. And I see uh, buoys in Q, so I'm going to find Q and buoys. I'm looking for that symbol there. And right here, I can see that it is a red buoy with a little R next to it is a single color other than green or black. So I can see that it is a red buoy. Ours also has an N next to it. So on this side, I can see that an N next to the buoy tells me it's a conical buoy or N or none buoy. So that's the shape of the buoy. The quotes is what is physically on the buoy. So it is physically has the number four. That's number one. Number two is a green buoy, and I can see that there with my green buoy symbol. And then it has uh, the color is green, and then the shape of the buoy is C. So I go over to this side again, and I can see C is for a can or a cylindrical buoy. So now I know that that is a can buoy and it's green. It has a number one on the buoy. Okay, now we have number three. We have this magenta stamp over the buoy symbol. We have Y, some characteristics, and some more characteristics. So going back to this page here on our buoys, I'm just going to keep going down. And if it's a lit mark or a lighted mark, it has that stamp over it. So it is telling us that that buoy has a light. It is a lighted mark on standard colors. What color is that buoy on? Y. If we don't know what Y is, we can always look up the rest in our abbreviations. Y is yellow. And we also have some other abbreviations, um, FL. FL is going to be your flashing characteristic. So it's flashing every four seconds, yellow flashing light. And then the PRIV is going to be private. So it's a privately maintained buoy. Okay, number four is our day board. Let's find that one. I see it under beacon, so still Q. Okay, so here we are on our beacons. So we have beacons with color, no distinct top mark for the uh, shape of the square and the triangle. Those are our beacons. So this is our beacon and it is red. It does not have a light on it. It has number six. Again, this one is our beacon or day board that has a, a number seven on it. Okay, number six. Okay, so for number six, 
we see a lot going on here, but we do see two light marks. Remember, that's the dot with the teardrop. So we see two of those, and they're connected by this dashed line. We have the characteristics of the lights there, too. Now, if I go to lights, which is P for aids and services here, I start with the basic light symbol, so we know that it is a light. And then I'm going to go over a couple pages, and I find this symbol, where it is a leading light with a leading line. So that is a range line, that if those are in line, those lights are in line, then you would be steering, or the lights would be bearing, 270. In this case, it doesn't tell us what the uh, bearing would be, but it is a leading line or a range line, lighted visible range. Okay, so on number seven, we have a well, kind of a lot going on in this image as well. Um, I'm going to look for the nature of the seabed on this one. So J, the nature of the seabed. And there I find lots of types of seabeds, sand, mud, clay. And then if I keep going, we get this uh, curved type image, which is similar to what it is in that picture. And it is a rocky area which is covered and uncovered dependent on that tide. So remember that green color tells us that it's dependent on tide. We also have a few images of uh, this, and that would be kelp or seaweed. There's also a few little uh, plus signs. Let's get to those. Oops. So we have a few plus signs, which are just a danger. Here, the little plus is a non-dangerous rock. And then we also have that word foul. So just foul by itself, not um, not completely encircled, but it is foul ground, uh, non-dangerous to navigation, but to be avoided uh, anchoring or trawling in that area. So we have all that going on and then that little picture there. Um, again, the plus sign is our rock area. The submarine pipelines are going to be in our offshore installations for L. We have a few of the oil gas pipelines. Uh, it might tell you water sewer intake, that kind of thing. So those are our uh, submerged pipelines submarine pipelines. And our last one, we have a little anchor. So we're going to find what that is. So number 10 is going to be in our areas or limits section, the N. So we're going to go to N. And for N, we see the anchor for an anchorage. The anchor with the half an anchor could be a small vessel anchorage or just the simple anchor. So that is chart one, uh, just exercise in looking at your symbols. The next section we are going to practice our 60 D Street formulas. So let's get started on that. Okay, so for this next section, we are practicing that 60D street formula that we all know and love. So we are going, so it tells us we cruise at a speed of 11.6 knots 
for two hours and 14 minutes, what is the distance? So using the 60D Street, our time has to either be in hours or minutes. It can't be both. So we're going to convert that into minutes. So we have 120 minutes plus the 14 gives us 134 minutes. So now we can plug that into our formula. We're looking for distance. So we have speed times time over 60. We could plug in those numbers. 11.6 times 134 divided by 60. Eleven point six we get a distance of twenty five point nine nautical miles. For B, they told us it took us one hour and twenty two minutes to cruise a distance of eighteen point six nautical miles. What was our speed? So again, we need to convert this time into minutes. So we have 60 plus our 22 gives us 82 minutes. When we plug that in, we get 60 times D divided by T gives us speed. So we'll put in our numbers. We have a speed of 13.6 knots. Last one in this section tells us we were cruising at 14.3 knots for a distance of 24.6 nautical miles. What time, what was the time elapsed for the trip? How long did it take us? So this time we are looking for speed. So we get our one hundred and three minutes. So again, we need to convert this number back into hours and minutes. So I have 103, I'm going to subtract the 60, and I'm left with one hour and 43 minutes. And that was our practice for 60D Street. Okay, so for this section of the uh, final assessment, we're going to be practicing our compass error and going back and forth between true and compass and compass and true and calculating the missing pieces. So I have uh, C, D, M, V, T. So if I'm going this direction, I am going to be adding east, subtracting west. If I'm going this direction, I'm going to be adding west, subtracting east. So that is going to help me when I am figuring out these numbers. The first missing number I have is here under compass. So if I have a magnetic of 356 and I had 5 degrees east, going this direction, I'm going to be subtracting that. So subtracting that, I get 351. Now I'm still missing this one over here for number 2. This time I have uh, 251, and then I have 7 west. If I'm going this direction from M to C, I'm going to be adding that west. So I have 251 plus 7 gives me 258. Now here I'm missing a number in the middle. 
So I can start here or start here. Let's start on this one. I have 106 with a deviation of 3 east. If I'm going this direction, I'll be adding that east. So if I add that, I get 109. Let's check it to see if it works out going this way. I have 122 true and then 13 east for variation. If I'm going this direction, I'm going to be subtracting that east. So 122 minus 13 gives me that 109. That checks out. On this one, we are missing our true. So we have compass and we worked our way down. From magnetic, we have a variation of 15 east. So east is going to be adding, and then I get 20 plus 15 for 0, 3, 5. On this one, we are missing two missing pieces to the puzzle. So we have to do two problems. From true to magnetic, what is the difference? So I would just get the difference of 14, and then I have to decide if it's east or west. So if I'm going from magnetic to true, I'm going this way, and my number needed to increase, right? I had uh, 48 increasing to 62, I would need to add it. So that would give me an east. If I'm starting at 48 and going this direction, from 48 to 40, I have 8. And if I'm going from 48 to 40, I need to be going less than. I need to be subtracting. So if I subtract, that gives me east. And I could write in the, e the east. So that was just an exercise for compass error, but we are always going back and forth with missing numbers for that. So we will move on to our chart plot. That is on the 1210 TR plot. All right, so for the uh, plotting portion of our final assignment, we're going to be using the 1210 TR chart. That's the uh, Martha's Vineyard chart. And um, it tells us we are going to be starting in Woods Hole, which is right here. They have the ferries that go over to Martha's Vineyard. Um, and then from Woods Hole, we're going to be making our way down to uh, Block Island for the festival this weekend. So we're going to be navigating our way through Vineyard Sound and then crossing the um, Rhode Island Sound all the way over to Block Island. So the first thing that they get, tell us is um, after safely maneuvering around the ferries, so we've departed Woods Hole and we've dodged the ferries, you are heading southwest in Vineyard Sound. So we don't have a position yet. We just have gotten out of the harbor there, and we're headed southwest in the sound. Um, at 10 o'clock, you steady up on course 230 true at a speed of 6.8 knots, and you take the following bearings. So we need to plot our position and then put in our course, our speed, and possibly some DRs. So let's get started on that. So we have um, Nash on light, which is right here. And remember, our light is the solid dot. And then we have the Capola building on Nash on Island on the east side. So the Capola building is just the um, the name of a type of building, but it does say uh, CUP. And then uh, Nopska Point is going to be right here on the uh, Woods Hole side. So right there is going to be the light. So not one of the buoys, but the light itself. 
Okay, so for um, Nash on Light, we have 255. Five. I'm going to put my pencil on the uh, light in question. There we go. And then I'm going to find the focal point on a meridian and 255. Five. Our next one is the Capola building, and it is uh, closer to vertical at uh, 339, so I'm going to find 339 and then move it over. So I find 3, I have the focal point, and 339 on the meridian, and then I'm going to... Move this over. And strike my LOP. My next one is the uh, Nobska light, and that is bearing 042. So I'm going to find 042 at the top of my triangle and the focal point on my meridian with the my pencil on the uh, point in question. So 042. I have a pinwheel here as my 10 o'clock position. Now I need to plot my course, and my course was 230. So I'm just going to put my point on here and find 230. You can see. Okay, so this is my track line at a course of 230 degrees true at a speed of 6.8 knots. And this is my position at 10. So now we need to find that lat and long. I'm going to draw in my line. Okay, so to read latitude, I have, uh, this reaches all the way across, so I have 41 degrees, 25, 28.8, so 41 degrees, 28.8 minutes north. For longitude, I'm going to use the distance here. And then bring it down and I get 70 degrees, 41.9 minutes west. Okay, so on number two, it's asking us if we are steering uh, 230 degrees true down the sound, what do we need to steer per standard magnetic compass? So we need to convert from true to compass. So if we're going from T to C, we are going to be adding west, subtracting east. So we have our true course of 230 degrees true. Our variation we get from the compass rows. Now you can't see it here, but we have a variation of 15 degrees west. And so we're going to get our magnetic. Oh, it's west, so we're going to be adding that. So we have a magnetic of 245 degrees. And then we go to our deviation table in order to get the deviation. 
So our magnetic is 245. So our deviation is going to be 8 west. It's west, so we are going to be adding it, and we get a course, a compass course, of 253 degrees PSC. So that is our answer to number two. Question number three asks us, what time do you think we will be a beam of buoy 28? So buoy 28 is right here, and we want to know when we will be a beam. That means 90 degrees to starboard, or 90 degrees to port, either way, but it does say a beam to starboard. So I'm going to use my triangle to get in a beam line. So I'm just going to, um, I put the middle of my triangle, my uh, triangle, that middle line on the course, so I can get a 90 degree angle. So there's my 90. I could also use just the side of my triangle, line it up with the course line, wherever it hits the buoy, that's your 90. So this is the position that'll be a beam, but I want to know what time that is. So in order to do that, we're going to use 60 D Street. So if I was here at 10, when can I anticipate being here at a speed of 6.8 knots. So I need to measure my distance. And I get a distance of 4.5. Uh, exactly 4.5. So we have a distance of 4.5, a speed of 6.8. What is the time? That's our question. So we have our 60D formula. So 60 times D over S equals T. We'll plug our numbers in. And now we can calculate what T is. T equals 39.7, so we're going to call that 40 minutes. Now if we left here at 10, we are going to apply adding the 40 minutes. So we'd be there at 10.40. And that is our answer to number three. Okay, so we had anticipated passing this buoy at 1240. Uh, but back after we gotten our first fix, the fog rolled in, and we get a, um, a running fix. So that's two LOPs at different times. So at 1017, we can see the Nash on light. And then at 10.55, we can only see the gay headlight. So we're going to plot our 10.55 running fix using an LOP from 10.17 and at 10.55. So let's plot those LOPs, and then we'll advance the 10.17 LOP. Okay. So our first one is at Nash on Light. And that was okay. Let me 
switch my hands around so you guys can see. Okay, so I have, if you don't move it, focal point on the meridian and 292 on the same meridian. Now I can draw in that LOP. So I know I'm somewhere along that line at 1017, but I don't know where. So we need another piece of information. And we have gay head at 206. So let's plot that. Okay, so I'm somewhere along this line at 206, and now I need to advance my 1017 line. So how far do I advance it? I need to do my 60D streak. I have a speed of 6.8 knots. And my time is the difference between these two. So I need to quickly calculate my time. Fifty five minus seventeen. Gives me thirty eight minutes. So I have a time of 38 minutes and what is my distance? So I have D equals S times T divided by 60 4.3. So now I'm going to advance my Nash on Light LOP to 1055 by 4 miles, 4.3 miles. So I'm going to find 4.3 miles. And then wherever this LOP crosses my track line, that's what I'm going to use to advance it and then put in my new, my advanced LOP. So right at this point where the LOP crosses the track line, that's where I'm advancing my, that same line. Let's use the roll plotter to make it easy. So that is the LOP that I'm paralleling. I'm paralleling it to when it hits that mark that I just made. Okay, so I advanced this by 4 hours or 4.3 nautical miles. 
4.3 nautical miles. So I can call this my 1017 to 1055, and this is my 1055 LOP. So where these two meet, that would be an R fix at 1055. So from this, I can tell that I am to the left of track. Okay, so we plotted our running fix and we have drifted to the left of track. So we've decided to alter course and come a little bit farther to the right at 250. Um, at 1111, we get a GPS fix and we continue on at 250. So let's plot that. We had a latitude of 41, 24.1. So we have 24.1 as our latitude. And our longitude is actually on this line at 70, 50 minutes west. So. This is our 11 o'clock position, or 11.11. So this is our 11.11 position. Okay, so we have our 11.11 position right here. And then we had changed our course to 2.50. So let's plot that one in. 250 at a speed of 6.8. We haven't changed that. Okay, so we want to keep our eye out for lookout point right here, and we've decided to take a bow and beam fix. So remember with the bow and beam fix, we just find where we have that um, relative on our bow, 45 degrees relative on our bow, or broad on the bow. Um, so that's our bow time. And then when it's directly a beam of us, that's our beam time. So we have our 11.22 on the bow, and then 11.45 on the beam. So we need the difference between those times. So we have 23 minutes as our difference between the times. And then we use 60 D Street for our distance off or distance traveled, which are the same. So the distance traveled between these two are the same as the distance off. So using our time, we can measure our distance. So for distance, that's what we're looking for. Speed is 6.8 and time is 23. Let's plug it into the magic circle. We can plug it into our calculator. The two things we have, we multiply and then we divide by the thing that we don't have. So we have 6.8 multiplied by 23 divided by 60. And we get a distance of 2.6 nautical miles.
So we already have our course line in, so all we need to do is draw a, um, a beam LOP to our lookout point. So that's 90 degrees off of our course line. So again, that's why I like to use the triangle here. Just put it on our course line and draw in a 90 degree angle there. And then we have our distance off as being 2.6. That was our distance traveled, and now we can do our distance off for 2.6. So from the lookout tower itself, Okay, so we have the LOP line, and now we need our distance off to get our second LOP. So we have 2.6, that was our distance traveled, is equal to our distance off. And we put that on the, that's 2.6 miles from the lookout tower on the LOP, which would be right on our track line, maybe a little bit to the south of our track line. So this would be our 11.45 bow and beam fix. Okay, so we have our 11.45 bow and beam fix, and we continue on course 2.5.0. On question number six, it asks us if we continue on 2.5.0, what do we need to steer per standard compass? So we need to go back to our TV MDC. So we have a true course of 250 degrees true. Our variation is given to us on the compass rows. So we have 15 degrees west. So we have our, and west we're going to be adding. So we have a magnetic of 265 degrees. Then we're going to need our deviation table to help us with the deviation. We have 265, so that gives us a deviation of 8 degrees west. And now I can get my uh, add because it's west, and I can get 273 degrees PSC as my course I will be steering. As we continue on our 250 course towards uh, Block Island, we want to check our deviation table for accuracy. So we see buzzard light and uh, VS buoy in line we can get a range and then check our deviation table. So when we see these in line, let's just connect them. From the chart, the chart is always true. So if we saw them in line, we would know that they would be bearing Three one one degrees true. I have three one one degrees true. But on my compass, when I saw them in line, my compass was bearing three three two degrees PSC. So using variation, I can using variation, I can see what my numbers will if my deviation 
will match my deviation table. So by what is the deviation by calculation? I have my variation of 15 degrees west, so we're going to be adding that, and we get 3 to 6 degrees, and now I have need to get the difference here between the magnetic and compass. So I am going to get my difference. I have 6 degrees. Now I need to determine if that's east or west. If I'm going from T to C, from M, I am going to be adding west or subtracting east. In order to get from 326 to 332, I would need to add. So I have a deviation of 6 west. Now does that match our deviation table? My magnetic heading is 326. My deviation should have been, according to my deviation table, 2 degrees west. So I might need to adjust my deviation table or uh, create a new one. So we can work on that. All right, so we've moved a little bit down the chart here. I know where we just were is barely on the chart, but um, we have gotten a GPS fix at 12.45. So we were somewhere along that line at 12.10, and at 12.45 we get a new GPS fix. So we are just about navigating our way out of Vineyard Sound and transiting Rhode Island Sound. The GPS told us that we had a latitude of 41 degrees, 21.2. So we'll get 21.2. Somewhere along that line, GPS or er, longitude is 5.5 so I have a fix right here at 12.45 now ask me what is the true course to get to buoy 1 which is way down here. It's uh, black and it has a number one and a bell on it. So, I need to get some lines extended to create a straight line. All right, I think I got it. Always draw on the same triangle. I jiggled a little bit, but we're going to keep on going. Okay, so. Okay, so they asked us, what is the course to steer directly to that buoy? So we cross two, meridi two meridians, so I'm just going to use the first one here to get my true course. I have the meridian crossing the focal point, and then I read at the bottom. Going this direction, I would have 244 degrees true. You could always use the world plotter as well. We are very close to it. Bring it up. Two, 
two four four. So if I have two four four degrees, I am going to convert that. Okay, so I have my course of two forty four degrees true. And now my desired ETA is fifteen fifteen. I left my last position at twelve forty five. So I need to calculate what speed do I need to make good in order to get down to Bluff Island at 15.15. So I need the difference between the times. We always start with the minutes. We can't subtract 15 from 45, so we have to borrow. This turns into 75, so I'm left with 30 minutes, 2 hours, and 30 minutes. If I convert that all to minutes, I get 150 minutes as my time. My speed is my question mark, and my distance I need to measure. It's so a long distance, so I'm going to start with 5. So that's 20. Twenty plus three point three. So my distance is twenty three point three nautical miles. And I could plug that into my sixty D street to find speed. Plug in my numbers. I get a speed of 9.3 knots. So in order to make it to uh, Block Island to see the festival, I need to increase speed quite a bit to 9.3 knots in order to make my desired ETA. So that is it for the uh, final chart plot. I really hope you guys learned something and um, Hope to see you in Coastal Nav 2 or Celestial or uh, one of the other workshops that I'll, that I'll be around. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'd be happy to help. Alright, enjoy. Bye.